Yeah, so the history of Intrepid Camera. Um, it started as a, a university project. I was looking into sort of what would happen if um, new younger photographers were entirely priced out of the uh, the large format market, and how the how the industry and sort of the creative medium as a whole would disappear because people literally couldn't afford to to buy cameras, and therefore there'd be no supporting um, infrastructure like processing, and the skill as a whole would get lost. So started to explore um, options of how how that could be sort of solved and what initially jumped out was sort of a movement in um, open source technology and how sort of 3D printing and using laser cutters and things like that and how that could completely change uh, the way we um, have products. So we looked into that and sort of came up with this concept of uh, an open source large format camera that anyone could, down <coughs> anyone could download the plans for and then sort of build themselves. And from that, we sort of grew a little community online, people talking about this idea. And that eventually evolved into us actually designing an affordable uh, camera moved away from the idea of open source but something that we'd actually provide as a service so we'd make the camera and uh, you could buy it. Uh, so yeah Intrepid started out of that idea and we took the idea to uh, the crowdfunding platform Kickstarter about two yeah three years ago now and that allowed us to launch our uh, first model which people got really excited about a lot of people backed which was really um, really great and from there we started shipping cameras uh, to hundreds of people all over the world and a really interesting community grew out of that who, um, who constantly gave us feedback about uh, what we could change with the camera and that sort of directly fed into how we went on as a business as very much a sort of a community-led design business who uh, would listen to what users wanted and try and implement it into their products. So the future of Intrepid is um, we'll continue to develop new products, we'll continue to uh, look into whatever the community is saying and what they would like to see in products. Um, things that are coming out in the near future is we're going to uh, do a redesign of our 4x5, the one I'm building now actually, and, um, and we're going to launch that next year. That will feature um, rear movements, um, some more stable design, more robust components, um, and basically just sort of all the upgrades that people have requested we'll try and fit into um, a still a lightweight and uh, compact camera body. We're also going to keep the price the same as well because I think the price itself is a feature of, feature of the cameras because it allows people to have access to them when they wouldn't necessarily have access to a new large format camera before. Um, we're also continuing to develop the 8x10, making minor changes as that um, as production on that progresses. And the biggest uh, sort of product launch I think we've got coming out is um, we're moving from cameras to the darkroom, and we will be developing a enlarger. So completing the circle of having a camera, taking a picture, and then being able to print it. It's a light box for the back of your camera that changes the camera from a camera into an enlarger. You um, can project through the lens with your negative held in the holder and the light source at the back. Uh, it's really compact, um, it'd be controlled by a digital timer so you can put in settings of how long you want your exposures to be, you have, can have complete control over that. So that's all the big, the big things coming up from us.
over the next, yeah, over 2018, over the next year. There you go, so yeah, you can see the negative projectors. And you can make a huge print using this, or a really small detailed one. Um, you could use it to project horizontally onto the wall, or uh, traditionally using a tripod down into a printing frame. So some of the biggest challenges we've had during developing the camera was the bellows, and we had to come up with some quite novel solutions of how to uh, how to make bellows quickly and out of new materials and for them to be affordable. Because the bellows can be an incredibly expensive and labour-intensive part of the part of the production. So that was really um, that was a really interesting process of figuring out how we could use CNC technology uh, and also traditional craft to make to make the bellows. Um, we looked into all sorts of um, on source, all sorts of new um, materials and things the bellows could be made of. And we ended up settling on um, some quite traditional materials, uh, like ripstop nylon for the outside is sort of a perfect substitute for leather, when leather would have been used. Because it's sort of very hard wearing, uh, waterproof. Some other big challenges we had along the way was um, was kind of simply teaching people a craft that didn't really have any experience with, um, but that led us to make some sort of quite novel design choices because we weren't coming at this from uh, the angle of um, traditional large format camera builders, uh, and I think if we all had experience building cameras before, we probably would have ended up building something quite similar to what had come before. And I don't think Intrepid would have been quite successful if, um, if we hadn't sort of had a pair of fresh eyes on it. So that was an interesting process of taking people who had just sort of traditional product design backgrounds and showing them sort of what they'd assumed was an old bit of technology and turning it into what is essentially a modern bit of technology, um, particularly the way it's manufactured. So the way we build cameras here in Intrepid is probably a little bit different to how it's done um, traditionally. We build in large batches um, and in the new workshop we've got separate zones for each process. So the cameras come out of the CNC router room which is located just to my right. And after that they go into the sanding room where they're processed and that includes deburring from the routing process, uh, varnishing and then fine sanding to give them a nice finish. And from there they go to sub-assembly, which is where we put in all the threaded parts, uh, any magnets, any gears, things like that. And then from there they go to where I'm sitting now, which is the assembly table, where people screw on all the aluminium components. And then they do the final assembly, which is what I'm doing now, actually, which you just essentially check every single part, make sure it's working. And then once you're satisfied, you fold it down and then it goes to the shipping room, where it goes out to all of our lovely customers. Um, we build in big batches because it allows us to bring the price down sort of dramatically. If we were doing these as one-off objects, uh, they would be hugely expensive because they aren't, it, they're not made out of sort of cheap and cheerful materials. They are made out of you know, an engineering material with aluminium components, but because we build in such large quantities, we are allowed, able, to, uh, able to bring that price down quite a lot, uh, which is obviously something we pass on to, um, to the customers. And as we continue to grow, now we've gone from uh, myself in a small garage in Hove, freezing, building cameras, to uh, myself and six others in a much larger garage, still freezing and still building cameras. And we find ourselves in a position now where we're building batches of hundreds of 4x5s at a time, and we currently have a batch of 400 uh, 8x10 cameras on the go from our second Kickstarter, which was to launch the 8x10. Um, we initially wanted, initially wanted um, 18,000 pounds for that, to buy some new machinery. And we ended up getting 220,000, which was a real shock to, I think, a lot of people involved in the community that there was that much uh, demand for. So I think it was really exciting to um, discover a niche and provide a service to people who um, didn't have access to 8x10 cameras before and we're just going through the process and a minute of building them which has um, been really exciting.
and that sort of brings us brings us up to date of where Intrepid is now. <laughs>